other Danto uh, was the Johnsonian professor of philosophy at Columbia uh, and a, a very influential philosopher in many different areas, including the philosophy of knowledge, the philosophy of epistemology, the philosophy of action, uh, and the philosophy of art. He also became an art critic for the periodical The Nation, and he wrote for them uh, from, for about 20 years, starting in 1986. And he, he wrote regularly on uh, both uh, historical uh, exhibitions and, and new work. Uh, Danto is important uh, for art in at least several different ways. Uh, because he was a distinguished philosopher in other major areas of philosophy, he began to bring a great deal of respectability to the philosophy of art, uh, which uh, raised the prestige of the philosophy of art. So within that area, of course, he's an important figure. Uh, but for the general public, he's uh, an important figure because he brought his philosophy to the art world uh, as an art critic. And he became a major voice uh, for uh, especially 20th century art. Uh, and he became uh, what one now calls a, a public intellectual, uh, winning, for example, things like the National Book Award in, cri in criticism. Danto's thoughts on criticism uh, within the area he wrote um, were pretty uh, um, revolutionary. Uh, a great deal of criticism uh, especially of the more avant-garde work of the period, uh, was, was narrative in nature. Uh, that is, the art critics uh, following Clement Greenberg, art critics like Rosalind Krauss, tended to do criticism by placing figures in certain historical trajectories, uh, located them as working out certain problems. Uh, they uh, uh, more or less dealt with their uh, works as, as part of a larger historical process. Danto emphasized the singularity of, of the artwork. As a philosopher, his definition of art was that a work is an artwork only if it's about something uh, and it embodies whatever it's a, about in an appropriate form. Uh, that gave him a method of criticism. Uh, as a critic, what he would do would be to offer an interpretation of the work to say what it was about, and then he would go on to show how the artist's choices in the works uh, uh, managed to appropriately realize or manifest or articulate whatever it was about. Uh, that gave him a way to focus on the artwork as a particular object, as opposed to the kind of criticism I just mentioned, which tried to fit the artwork into a, a narrative uh, of development which tried to relate the artwork to uh, 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 other artworks uh, in terms of the trajectory of history. Uh, I think one way that he's uh, impacted criticism uh, was to, uh, in some ways, challenge certain uh, dominant ways of conducting criticism. On the one hand, uh, he challenged what you could think of as modernist art criticism. That was criticism uh, that tried to explain how successive artworks were important because they advanced the definition of art, or they ad advanced uh, thinking about the, the nature of art. Uh, Danto, uh, partly because of his philosophical argumentation and partly because of his practice, uh, discouraged that. In fact, showed how certain dominant forms of modern art, modernist art criticism uh, were, were, were formed on uh, uh, flawed conceptual foundations. Uh, he did this primarily by his famous argument from indiscernibles. Uh, he was a, a great uh, defender of Andy Warhol, and especially Andy Warhol's Brillo Box. Uh, and uh, he thought part of the uh, critical and philosophical significance of Andy Warhol's Brillo Box was that it showed that, that something could be an artwork that 
uh, looked exactly like something else that was not an artwork. How Andy Warhol's Brillo box could count as art, whereas Proctor and Gamble's Brillo box would not count as art. This was a especially uh, disastrous for the modernist project because the modernists thought that one that the that the, the the task of the work of art was to reflect upon art and the nature of art by artistic means, so that uh, the modernist artist would attempt to make points about the nature of art by means of his or her painting. For example, uh, the modernist artists like Morris Lewis would make paintings that uh, were, were flat, that had no depth in it, and in an effort to make the point that the, uh, w the, the work of painting uh, was flat rather than three-dimensional. But you see that that notion of painting using painting to reveal the nature of art depended on the notion that there was something that you could tell by looking that made something an artistic painting. That was exactly what Warhol uh, challenged with his Brillo boxes. He made things that looked exactly like ordinary things. And Danto, uh, as a philosopher critic, seized upon that idea and showed that uh, the modernist project was, was flawed because it was based on the idea that you could tell that something was an artistic painting by looking. And then this opened the way uh, for a kind of criticism that wasn't based on uh, a, a modernist narrative of how artworks got closer and closer to disclosing their own nature through the way they looked. Well, uh, again, here we have to think about what Danto had to say about people like Andy Warhol. Uh, what Danto means by the end of art isn't, isn't that art is going to stop uh, being made. In fact, there's probably more art being made now than ever before in the history of the world, and there are probably even more artists. So the end of art isn't the end of art making. What it is is the end of a certain kind of narrative of art, uh, namely a, a progressive narrative. Uh, Danto thinks in the history of Western art there were two great narratives. The first great narrative was the narrative of uh, th what we could call uh, the uh, uh, conquest of perceptual appearances. That is, uh, the attempt to make paintings that look like what they're paintings of. In other words, to come up with perfect representations of whatever the painting is about. Now, he thinks that that narrative ended uh, when uh, photography and cinema came onto the scene because they were able to capture the appearance of things automatically. Uh, that forced artists to think of uh, or to find a new, vacation, a new vocation, uh, a new occupation for them. Uh, and at that point, one of the options uh, that was discovered and seized upon was what I've just called modernism, the notion that what the painter had to do was discover the nature of painting and exhibit it uh, by means of painting. And that story begins, so to speak, in the 19th century with people like Manet, who emphasized that the painting is not a perfect representation of the world by eschewing, for example, perspective. Uh, then you have uh, uh, experiments like cubism, which also eschew perfect ocular representations of the world, uh, again to emphasize its, the, the flatness of paintings as uh, that dialectic uh, proceeds through things like color field painting, each, each painting uh, being supposedly uh, in addition to the, to the progress of discovering the, the true nature of art by means of art, by means of painting. Danto thinks that uh, that kind of art history, the possibility of a pr uh, progressive evolutionary uh, account or story of art ended uh, when uh, people like Warhol proved uh, that uh, something could be a painting uh, 
uh, not in the virtue of, of how it looked, but in virtue of something else yet to be discovered. Uh, and Danto argued that that discovery would have to be made by a philosopher, not a painter. Uh, this has important repercussions then for how one conducts criticism. As I said, no one, one no longer conducts criticism by telling you uh, a, a story about the evolution of art history in which each work of art, each painting, has a, has a role or has a place or doesn't have a role or place in the narrative. Uh, instead, one has to uh, look at each artwork on its own terms, uh, assessing how the artwork succeeds or fails to succeed in articulating uh, its, own, its, its, its own meaning. Uh, well, especially uh, around 1976, uh, the notion that we had entered a postmodern period of art became very uh, popular in the art world. Uh, and that notion of postmodernist art really um, was related to what I just talked about, this modernist story. This art was postmodernist in that, like Danto, it, it declared an end to the modernist uh, uh, progressive narrative of, of self-disclosure. Uh, the postmodernists uh, uh, declared an end to that kind of work, though, uh, in, in, in terms of, of politics, for the most part. Uh, they were anti-formalist. They, they thought that the modernist uh, experiment was too much concerned with art for its own sake. And they, they called for uh, examination of uh, 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 art in terms of its exploration of semiotic codes and political relationships. Uh, so they, they were post, the, they, they also told a narrative. They uh, identified certain uh, 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 artists like Cindy Sherman or Richard Prince uh, as, as anti-minimalist and anti formalists, uh, uh, and they uh, constituted a, a new canon, like the, motion, the people who were called the, uh, the, um, the motion picture, M MGM uh, artists, uh, and they did it in virtue of uh, their occupying this new historical niche. Uh, Danto, uh, on the other hand, uh, characterizes the period in terms of being post-historical, by which he means that uh, art no longer has to be involved in the modernist project. Artists can explore anything, any avenue, any interest they have. Uh, but actually his view is broader than the postmodernist because the postmodernists think that artists now uh, should eschew formalism, they should eschew styles like minimalism, and instead they should become more socially engaged. They should, for example, become involved uh, in uh, feminist explorations of un unmasking uh, misogynist art. Uh, but notice that uh, they still uh, try as critics to set the terms uh, uh, that the artist should engage. Uh, Danto is far more pluralistic. He says that art can pursue whatever uh, interest the artist has. Uh, art can look like anything uh, and uh, that there's no overarching historical mandate that artists should be satisfying. So in that way he uh, has uh, uh, open critical possibilities uh, to uh, far more various kinds of artistic explora uh, explorations than postmodernism. Uh, postmodernism uh, still, uh, as, as conducted by, say, uh, the critics in uh, art, art magazines like uh, uh, October, uh, still think that um, the critic is more or less to uh, uh, examine the art world, uh, scrutinize the art world in terms of 
uh, whether or not uh, the artists are fulfilling or not fulfilling certain historical roles. Uh, Danto's campus, uh, canvas was much larger uh, and uh, much more uh, open to uh, artists going in their own direction rather than having to subserve the dictates of some uh, historical process. In principle, Danto's notion of post-historical uh, post art is uh, um, very open to artistic experimentation. Oddly enough, though, there may be one kind of limitation uh, built into uh, Danto's critical historical vision. And that has to do with the way that Danto conceives of the nature of art. If you recall, I said Danto thinks that a work of art has uh, content, content that it then develops or embodies or articulates by the choice of a certain set of forms. Now, Danto himself thinks of content in terms of having a meaning, something like having a theme uh, that then the artwork goes on to uh, explore in, in, some, in some depth by means of the artistic choices it, mean, it makes. But notice that, that that notion is key to the idea of artists having meanings, uh, meanings that are open to interpretation. Uh, so that, in a manner of speaking, there, the theory is limited uh, by the fact that it, it is so committed, committed to artworks having meaning. Uh, the point that I'm trying to get at is well, there may be some artworks that are what we would call beneath meaning. Uh, what, what is the meaning of many uh, Baroque string quartets? Uh, it'd be very difficult to state what the meaning of it is in terms of some proposition or theme or thesis. Uh, if we think of the visual arts, there, there may be artworks that are really uh, uh, about uh, ravishing you in terms of uh, their beauty. They might not be uh, trying to, in a manner of speaking, say anything. Uh, they might not have meaning. Uh, they may be just delicious eye candy. Uh, and uh, Danto's theory is not well suited uh, for dealing with artworks that are what we would call beneath or underneath uh, or without, without meaning. Uh, Danto, ideally himself as a critic, functioned best with works that he could identify uh, in terms of the po its possession of a meaning or not. For example, with Warhol's Brillo Box, he would identify the, the meaning of that uh, in terms of notions like uh, arguing that Warhol was saying that the artwork is a commodity. Uh, and then he would commend the work by noting that uh, Warhol did this ingeniously by presenting something that looked just like a commodity as a work of art. Or, or Danto, uh, as, as well, would argue that Warhol's Brillo box uh, was uh, a, a way of, of saying that art can look like anything, uh, which Warhol achieved by just taking an ordinary everyday object of the sort that you might see in the storeroom of a grocery store and presenting that as a work of art. But it was important for him to uh, identify some meaning, something that the artwork was involved in saying uh, and then explaining how the artist's choices of the form or the way it was embodied advanced or supported that meaning. But the limitation there is that there may be some artworks that don't have meanings at all. They might be just about engendering certain perceptual experiences. Think, for example, of, of, of a flicker film. Uh, so uh, the uh, uh, framework that Danto proposes for art criticism, not so much the notion of post-historical art, but that framework may have certain limitations in it. Uh, limitations that, uh, to roughly summarize them, uh, uh, constrain uh, the object of criticism to things that have what we would normally call meanings. Mm -hmm. 
I, I would say that post, the post-historical framework is a, is a better framework. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if we look at uh, art history, Western art history from the, the long view, uh, an awful lot of it was devoted to the, the quest of realism, of, of technically getting uh, works that look more and more uh, like uh, the kinds of things that they, they, they were about. Um, and uh, so uh, the uh, large uh, uh, arc of West, Western art uh, doesn't seem post-historical. It does seem as if it's on some kind of uh, quest. Um, Postmodern art, uh, as well, uh, I, as I suggested, tends to be uh, more uh, limited politically. Uh, and uh, in certain venues, uh, like maybe some of the Whitney Biennials, especially the ones in the, the 90s, uh, it did seem as though uh, uh, postmodernist art, or at least politicized postmodernist art, uh, was, was dominant. However, uh, roughly it seems to me that, that now is uh, a, a time where art is, is uh, um, or the age is better described as, as, as post-historical. Uh, um, academic critics do tend, I think, to, to favor political criticism, uh, but that makes their uh, uh, view of the art world uh, some, somewhat limited. Well, in some ways he did consider almost every, every kind of form, uh, and he, he thought that almost every form of art uh, did have this problem of uh, the art itself uh, uh, having reached a point where anything uh, could be art. Uh, so in, in, in dance, postmodern dancers like the people at Judge and Church uh, presented ordinary movement as dance. So uh, in dance then uh, it was the case that uh, ordinary movement, uh, movement that looked just like ordinary movement could, could be art. Uh, in, in music the experiments of John Cage suggested that Ordinary everyday noise could be uh, could be art. Um, so, in terms of many of the the uh, dominant art forms, uh, uh, Danto could come up with examples uh, where uh, the difference between art artworks and real things uh, would would dissolve. Uh, however, uh, it's not clear that his own method of criticism. Uh, was uh, uh, able to uh, um, accommodate every kind of work in every art form. Uh, for example, pure orchestral music uh, very often seems uh, less uh, susceptible to interpretations in terms of meanings. Uh, even even uh, uh, symphonic music of the 19th century uh, often uh, it, it's probably better comprehended in terms of the, uh, the, the beauty or the pleasingness of its, or, uh, of its orchestral arrangements rather than in terms of its meaning or saying things. So uh, again, the problem that Danto's uh, uh, type of criticism based in his notion of the nature of the work of art comes back to again and again is the possibility of art that is meant to be uh, uh, beneath meaning, uh, maybe art that only aspires to be beautiful, maybe art that only aspires to please the eye or the ear. Well, uh, I was originally attracted to Danto's work very uh, er early in my uh, um, career as, let's say, a, an, an art lover. Uh, I was uh, an undergraduate student in philosophy, uh, but I was always interested in, 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 in art, in fact, in, in all the various arts. And there were certain philosophers, Danto foremost among them, but also George Dickey and, and Richard Wallheim, 
whose philosophies of art were very, very much key to contemporary developments in the art world. Uh, they weren't building theories on you know, the, the classics of 19th century art. Uh, they weren't uh, uh, busy trying to denounce new developments in the art, saying it's not art or my child could do that. They were interested in developing conceptual frameworks uh, that were keeping track of uh, what were almost daily or weekly developments in the art world. In fact, Danto's earliest art, art philosophizing uh, occurred in an article that he wrote that was called The Art World that was actually uh, in, in many ways a theoretical response to the uh, work of, of, of Warhol uh, that was exhibited in the Stable Gallery in, I think, 1963 or 1964. So as someone who loved art and loved philosophy, uh, I was attracted to Danto as someone who seemed to bring those two together uh, in a way that uh, was full of life and that it addressed what was happening then and there. Uh, in, in the living, uh, uh, um, de developing uh, adventure of art. I actually um, have been very influenced by Danto in a number of respects, but maybe the most important one is that by studying Danto and uh, appreciating what his strengths were, uh, but also his weaknesses, uh, I think I've been able to somewhat uh, refine uh, my own approach to criticism. Uh, as I said, Danto uh, begins with the key notion that a work of art is something that has a meaning uh, which it embodies uh, in the formal choices or the choice of forms that the artist makes. Now, I've, I've pointed out that one limitation to that is, is that there is art, arguably, that doesn't have a meaning. Um, taking heed of that, uh, I would like to propose an, another kind of approach, which is that even if art doesn't have a meaning, even if an artwork doesn't have a meaning, it does have a purpose. And so instead of trying to identify the meaning of an artwork, one should identify the purpose of an artwork and then go on to see how the artist's choice of forms, how the artist's d uh, way of embodying or articulating or realizing that purpose uh, succeeds or doesn't succeed in uh, forwarding or supporting uh, that, that purpose. Uh, this maintains what I think is one of the great uh, strengths of Danto's critical approach, namely that it addresses the artwork in its own terms it, turns, it treats the artwork as a singularity. It, 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 it treats it as a particular with its own purposes. Um, and that's one of Danto's strengths. But it, it, it does it by broadening, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, what the artwork is about by identifying uh, its, its purpose rather than its meaning. And by identifying the meaning, uh, that uh, overcomes the objection to Danto's uh, own approach, uh, which uh, I, I suggested uh, always hinges on coming up with an interpretation, and for that reason uh, is ill-suited to works that are designed not to be interpreted, but to do something, uh, works that are beyond or below meaning. In some cases, it's pretty pretty clear that the the purpose of an art may may be to uh, arrest your your senses, to uh, uh, um, bring about certain kind of, of of sensations. I mean, the the critic or the art lover always has to use themselves uh, uh, and their their reaction as uh, a very important uh, information. Uh, a very important contribution to their identifying what the work is about. Uh, just to take some trivial kind of examples, you know, uh, if you uh, go to a movie and it's a 
a handkerchief movie and you find yourself crying, uh, then it seems that probably the purpose of the artwork is to uh, um, um, be what's called a, a tearjerker. Uh, and, and so it probably does have uh, a meaning content in terms of uh, themes of sadness and loss. On, on the other hand, uh, uh, an, another, another work of art may just seem to uh, grab you by the nerve endings and shake you up. Uh, excite you, make your heart run faster, maybe a, a piece of music, or make you feel as though you want to dance. Uh, it may not, in that sense, have a, a meaning, but you can still tell on the basis of your reaction to it that, it, that, that uh, its purpose is uh, uh, to uh, 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 stimulate you, maybe stimulate you without saying anything. Well, again, I would say the great limitation uh, of Danto's theory of criticism is that he is uh, more or less, uh, it seems, committed to the, the notion that artworks must have meanings. Although I would have to be fair to him and say at some points that he doesn't actually claim that artworks always have interpretations. He always, he only claims that it's always legitimate to ask what an artwork means. Uh, it might be the case that uh, he uh, gives a negative answer to that, uh, but he thinks that interpretation is always legitimate. The problem there is, though, uh, that it's not clear how Danto proceeds if, if he determines that something is not interpretable. Uh, does he uh, discount it as a work of art? Uh, does he have uh, no means to talk about the artist's choices? So uh, it's either the case that his, his, his approach is limited uh, by not having any means to handle uh, works that are beneath meaning, uh, or uh, that, in fact, he would deny their status as artworks. I think a good critic is uh, uh, a, a person uh, who uh, is not only sensitive, observant, and attentive, but is extremely uh, well informed um, about not only the history of art, but what's uh, happening uh, in, in, the, in the art world uh, 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 that he inhabits, uh, so that uh, uh, he or she will not only be able to recognize uh, things that uh, are achievements because of uh, developments that have already crystallized or consolidated, but also is able to see uh, how novel developments uh, fit into the scheme of things because the critic has uh, a really good map uh, uh, of the territory. Danto was the best critic of the second half of the 20th century. Well, I, I think that at least some art has the possibility of uh, expanding people's is sympathies and, and, and tolerance uh, by, for example, uh, showing uh, people from one, one group or one nation or one race about the commonalities of their lives with the lives of others. Uh, however, uh, though I think that some, some art can do that, um, I don't think that that's the, the, the task of all art. I don't think there is a single task that all art has, but surely some art has the, uh, has, uh, uh, the aim and can succeed at the aim of expanding human sympathies. Um, for example, there was recently uh, that photograph of the, the, the young uh, dead Syrian boy, uh, and I think that, uh, that that photograph 
uh, more than uh, a great many uh, newspaper editorials had had the uh, effect of uh, expanding uh, the uh, range of people who were concerned about Syrian refugees. Thank you.